Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made my tabletop water fountain using cement, leftovers from Christmas packaging and polymer clay. It was actually quite a simple sculpt and I really hope you enjoy. This is just a cheap planter that I bought from my local hardware store. It was like four quid, so super cheap. Uh, filled it with some aggregate concrete at the bottom um, just so that I have a stable surface to place my PVC piping in which will be the armature to the main fountain. I am using CT1 silicon sealant to hold all the pipework together. Now I'm not kidding this stuff once it's dry it could stick a child to the ceiling and if these lockdowns here in the UK continue that could actually be a viable option. Now it's time to crack out the hot glue gun of hell. I hate using these things, namely because I either stick myself to something, burn myself on it, or I come away feeling like I am absolutely covered in cobwebs from all that weird gluey stringy stuff that it makes. It's not very nice. However, it is really good for sticking polystyrene to PVC piping. Although I did also find that I physically cannot stand the sound of polystyrene. It makes an awful noise. So creating this build to begin with the armature was hell for me <laughs> hopefully you don't have that problem and you sail through it I did make this bit a little bit difficult on myself. I should have really done it before I had built up all the polystyrene around the plastic cup at the top. Um, but what I did is I poked two holes either side of the cup using the soldering iron um, and then created two channels for the water to flow down through the little pipes that I am now gluing in. Once the armature build was completely finished, I then went on to concrete in. I did start off with trying to apply the concrete using a paintbrush, but that didn't work out so well. So I moved on to using my hand, which also didn't really work out that well. It worked out fine for the sculpture, but not for my hand. Um, so if you are going to use your hands, put gloves on. <laughs> I should have. Um, and make sure you protect surfaces because this stuff literally gets everywhere, but it's quite fun to play with. It's like mud pies all over again. <laughs> While my cement is drying, I am now going to move on to make some of the uh, little features to go onto the fountain. Um, these are going to be small crystals. Um, I'm attempting to do a Skinner blend. I've never really worked with coloured clay that often, so there are probably much better tutorials out there if you're looking for how to do Skinner blends. This is probably not the best one. However, I did my best. It's not brilliant, <laughs> but it does. Uh, the crystals look quite pretty at the end, so, you know, it's a win for me. Look at that blend. Somehow I managed to create zigzags in a pasta machine. I don't even know how I did it. <laughs> it's fine. They're going to be crystals. It will look fine. <laughs> And just to make things difficult for myself, I am going to do it all over again with another colour. But luckily, down to the power of editing, you get to see it real quick. So, ta-da! Now I want to create some like magical plant life, um, or magical vines, or I'm not quite sure what they are, magical swirly-whirly things, because what magical forest doesn't have magical swirly-whirly things? Um, so I am just going to twist some floral wire round on itself just to create a small armature for it just so it's a little bit easier to manipulate whilst the clay is soft and it will be stronger when the clay is hard. Mm -hmm. 
And with the powers invested in my index finger, I give you lots of magical swirly whirly thingies. <laughs> To make all my leaves, I cheated a little bit and used a cookie cutter, fondant cutter, a cutter, one of those things, and yeah, just cut the shape of a leaf out. I'm using my cosplay as well because it will remain flexible. I'm also making my mushrooms out of cos clay, um, mainly because it remains super bendy and because all of these mushrooms are likely to be protruding out of rocks and whatnot, if they get knocked they are less likely to get broken. Now we are headed back over to the giant lump of cement that it's had two coats of cement now and has been primed with some grey paint. Um, I've just got these lovely little fairy lights and I would like to put them in the top so I'm just going to feed them through a strategically placed hole at the back and then hot glue them to the tube in the top of the structure. I'm also adding a little acrylic sheet just to stop the water from going too far back into the cave area um, and so that the water is directed more downwards. Now I'm going to paint all of my little magical thingy mabobs, my swirly whirly bits and all that sort of stuff. Um, <laughs> I'm using Arteza. I do leave the paints out so that you can see what colours I'm using but obviously in hindsight I realise that you can't read upside down or back to front. <laughs> So, it's there, you just need to use your magical powers, like I do, and read backwards. I'm using a little bit of UV resin on all of the leaves to create little water droplets. You know, I also realised that it's going to be right next door to a water fountain and is likely to get wet, so this is completely unnecessary. But I wanted to do it, so I did. <laughs>
I am now going on to make my first little epic mouse. Um, I am using Super Sculpey. Yeah, Super Sculpey. I forgot what it was called then. Super Sculpey. I am using that. Um, I've just got a small ball of foil underneath as armature because he's not really going to be much weight. So I'm just going to cover up his little body and, you know, create his little legs at the same time and then start working up from there. We so far have what looks like a turkey with no legs, so let's give this turkey some legs. These lovely little feet that you are seeing me make right now are not the feet that he ends up having at the end, namely because this wonderful little mighty mouse took a mighty tumble in the oven and broke both of his legs. So I had to go on to like full surgery mode amputate and then reattach. It was grim, but we made it through. I'm just gonna uh, chonk this little fella out so that me and him can have like the same body frame. I'm like small and chonky too. So whenever I am creating like anything that has two halves, like a face or a body, you'll quite often see me balling up my clay and then cutting it into half. And that is mainly because it then gives me two equal portions of clay. I can then, in this case, build up the cheeks of my little mouse and have them be the same size. Um, it just keeps proportion on his little head, although I do realize that, you know, his head is vastly larger than it should be. <laughs> For this little guy's eyes, I am using pre-baked balls of clay. That way, when I put them into his head, I don't end up squishing them and he doesn't end up with wonky eyes and all that sort of business. It's just a lot easier if you pre-bake your eyeballs. That sounds gross. <laughs> If when you are like sculpting heads and stuff like that and you find that you're a little bit too heavy handed and you tend to squash things that you've made, you can always put their heads on a spike. That sounds absolutely horrible, <laughs> but you can stick the head on like a skewer or something like that and sort of sculpt around it that way instead. Then you don't end up squishing it too much or you can bake stuff so long as it doesn't have any detail that you need to pop back on it. So if there's still textures that you need to do, then I would suggest using my stick the head on a pike method. Now it's time to make his little axe. I really enjoyed making his axe. I used a very similar technique that I used when I was making the crystals, um, just by taking thin slithers of clay off using the craft knife until I had what looked like a flintstone texture. Then I added a P90 
piece of balsa wood that I had whittled down just using a Stanley blade. Now is probably a good time to mention that over on my Facebook group, um, Pixie Wolf Designs, so if you fancy coming over, you're more than welcome to, I put out a post asking people to name this wonderful little mouse. And um, Andy Perry was the one that named him first, so he is now the Mighty Mouse of Minx. So thank you very much, Andy. Now that we have our little mouse family, it is time to stick them in the oven. It was at this point that I realised that you cannot read paints that are both upside down and back to front, so I did stop putting <laughs> the paints out that and I started using so many of them that it would have just cluttered my entire desk. Um, so if you do have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. As you may have noticed, our little mouse has also magically grown a cape. Um, this is because when he fell over in the oven when he was baking and broke his legs, um, I realised that he needed something just to give him a little bit of stability and the cape kind of helped keep him upright. Um, I do however go on to accidentally pull it off whilst I am painting it but there is an upside to this and that was I could then reach the, the cape behind so it was really helpful in the long run so we'll pretend that I didn't break it and that I meant to do it. All the areas that I intend to have like metallic over the top of it, um, I am painting black first only because my metallics, my metallics, 
metallics with a m, not a b. My metallic paints work better over dark colours than they do light colours. You may have noticed that none of my mice have tails. Don't worry, there is a reason for that. I intend to put them on later. Um, the reason that I did that is because if I had put them on and baked them, I would have had very rigid tails and I need their tails to sort of go over lumpy, bumpy rocks. So I am going to use Milliput later to create their little tails. Now that my little mice are all painted up, I am going back over to the waterfall and I'm just using my airbrush to get into all the nooks and crannies in all of the rocks. However, my airbrush does decide that it doesn't fancy doing that halfway through, so I did end up having to do the other half by hand. I'm hoping that there isn't too much of a difference and that you can't really tell the difference. I did my best to blend it. I found these lovely like fuzzy rocks on Amazon and I bought them like ages ago. I didn't actually have a project for them, I just kind of liked them. Um, but they are polystyrene so I couldn't think of anything that I could possibly use it for because I couldn't put it in the oven with any of my clay. So I found a use for them here and I think they look great in the bottom of the pool and it gives it a lovely sort of mossy feel. Now it's time to get the resin out. I am mixing quite a large batch because I need to realistically cover every area where the water will touch on my waterfall. Um, so be careful if you are going to use this stuff, it's actually really quite dangerous. I would let you know who made it, but it's really hard to pronounce it. It was made in Germany. Dein Epoxid Haas. I will put it in the description below so that you can try and read it. <laughs> With the leftover resin, I used it just to put a nice thin coat over the crystals that we made right at the beginning, just to make them nice and shiny. It looks quite pretty. So my wonderful other half, also known as like the magic third hand on some of my other videos, pointed out like the base of the mountain looked quite plain where the um, planter was. So we came up with the idea of having a cave that you could see into the mountain through the bottom. Um, so I painted up this lovely cave scene and I really need to sneeze, not now. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Um, and then I <laughs> copied an idea that I saw off of another YouTube channel called Studson Studios. Um, and he creates like these lovely, I don't know, these amazing houses out of literally trash that you can find around your house it's actually really amazing stuff um, but he quite often uses like foam board so I used some foam board that I had lying around the house 
um, to make some bricks with. So thank you very much, Stetson. It, it was a wonderful tip. To make all the bricks I cut down a tonne of foam board into tiny little rectangles and then I proceeded to pick off one side of every single brick manually which took what felt like an age um, but it really works the bricks themselves look really bricky <laughs> Now I made a load of other little bits to go on the scene but I did them off screen because I figured you wouldn't want to be sat here for the next six hours watching me make stuff so <laughs> to cut time a little bit I uh, cut a few corners so here are the bits that I made to go on the diorama. If you would like to see them I do have some footage, um, I can put them in a separate playlist just let me know down in the comments. I used the milliput to make all of the little mice tails and I did have some left over so I used the rest of that to create a few little roots sticking out here and there all over the rest of the waterfall. And that's it guys my waterfall is complete thank you so much if you have made it this far legend as always 
Um, it's quite a long video, so I always like to praise the people that are still here watching. <laughs> Um, if you are new to the channel and you really enjoyed this video, then please take a minute to subscribe. It really helps me out. Um, it helps the channel grow and the more growth that there is, the better videos I can make. Um, so if you fancy coming to check me out, you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook. Um, just look for Pixie Wolf Designs. Um, so I guess I will see you in the next one, guys. Thank you so much again. Bye bye. Oh, and uh, sorry about the red background. I did plan on doing something similar to a green screen with beautiful ethereal forests and mystical woodlands and all the rest of it. Turns out my computer's just a heap of and wouldn't let me do it. So red background, just pretend. Thank you, bye. <laughs>